So, I mean, it's been known for a period of a be better part of at least two decades that there's a unique uh, population of cells that makes up probably about 5% of the um, cells in the adult uh, human central nervous system that can turn into oligodendrocytes. So just as a quick refresher for anybody who, who doesn't remember this, oligodendrocytes are the cells that make myelin, they wrap axons, um, and the, it's only the terminally differentiated oligodendrocyte, so the cell at its full maturation that can make myelin and ensheath axons. And that's necessary for the maintenance of, uh, or for the restoration of saltatory conduction. So f rapid, fast conduction of action potentials through the central nervous system is dependent upon the uh, presence of uh, normal myelin architecture. Targeting the disease is myelin. How do we re how do we restore that? How do we bring oligodendrocytes back? The OPCs are evident. They're found tiled throughout the brain. They're tiled throughout the brain both in normal health and in disease. And again, they make up five percent of the cells of the adult central nervous system at least. Um, so those uh, cells are there. How do we get them to do what they? Um, should otherwise be doing, which is after demyelination happens, recovering and restoring that myelin. If we took an animal and we demyelinate the animal either chemically by something that dissolves or uh, relatively, in a relatively targeted way dissolves or damages myelin, or we induce an inflammatory response that targets myelin, you will see some remyelination occur in a period of just a few weeks. And in fact, with the chemical demyelination models where the kinetics are really well understood, two to four weeks after the demyelination happens, depending on the animal model and the age of the animal, um, you will see pretty robust remyelination. So why doesn't that happen in humans is, and in, in disease and MS is not well understood. But what we wanted to get at for therapeutics, and you know, the reason therapeutics are showing up right now is the capacity to screen drugs that are capable of, uh, of permitting or forcing those OPCs to differentiate, it, that's, the new, that's the new area of development. So that screening methodology that identified new drugs in whole new areas of biology has matured in the last five years or so, and that's what's really led to identification of drugs and then the first drugs being tested in people. So I'm here, I have biases here for sure, because I, it's actually what my research focuses on and my laboratory focuses on, and, and, and I've worked closely in collaboration with another scientist, Jonah Chan, who's a myelin biologist, and uh, we work to identify uh, 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 pathways that would be attractive and molecules that would be attractive and then have worked to validate them and in fact did the first uh, successful human clinical trial in patients in a, with a chronic lesion trying to see could we remyelinate in that setting. So you know just as a full disclosure I have an absolute and un, 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 unquestionable bias in that regard and a secondary bias that I think it'd be important for clinicians to understand is that because I've worked in that space I've, I've, I've provided some uh, counseling and advice to companies that are specifically targeting that approach so and I have particular opinions about approaches that will work. My, my, my strong opinion is that a small molecule approach is much more likely to be successful than an antibody mediated approach. So some people have postulated the use of antibodies because of their specificity, which is an advantage of antibody approaches over small molecules, but their negative is the target is in the central nervous system and antibodies are huge and don't get into the central nervous system via the blood brain barrier very easily and ha would have to be given, and in fact in clinical trials have been given at extraordinarily high doses in order to be able to get enough of them into the central nervous system to hopefully have some biological effect. That's not an optimal setting. The antibodies work well as immunomodulatory agents because the target is in the, is largely in the periphery, is largely in circulation. Trying to get those drugs into the central nervous system is a challenge. So small molecules, I think, is really the way to go. And then the uh, thing with small molecules is you have to know what's your target receptor so you can develop drugs that are selective for that target receptor as much as possible. Um, and that's, a, that's another uh, important area that I think that's where the exciting area of biology is going on. People have suggestive um, data about particular pathways. I think uh, a few of them are attractive. I happen to think a few are somewhat more attractive than others, but without, you know, 
that again revolves around my own uh, biases about things that I've been working on investigating, but working on what are the actual targets that might be capable of uh, encouraging OPCs to turn into oligo dendrocytes. That, that molecular exploration is ongoing and has led to understanding or identification of a whole, understanding is probably too strong a word, it's really identification of whole new pathways in biology. The understanding is going to come when we ultimately are able to draw those things together and I think that will be really important for uh, the development of the therapeutics, which is starting but in its earliest stages.